it would be really nice to be able to utilize this moisture for the garden and we're working on that that comes out the AC it's free water but for now we're just gonna use the hose what garden is that you say well I'm excited to announce that on the daddy curbs farm we're gonna have a butterfly garden to make that happen over here that's Drake White from the Nectar Bar. She's the butterfly lady. Hey, Drake. Hey. Tell me what's going on over here. So right now we are kind of shaping out the bed um, that we've picked the design to do. And we are kind of just shaping it out and, and getting out some of the green material. Drake is the local resident butterfly and pollinator expert. She has an amazing business that she gets to work with butterflies. That's fun all by itself. And she installs gardens for people to help other people contribute to the, the effort of providing for the pollinators so that we can have bees and butterflies and hummingbirds and all those things that are fun to watch and they serve a purpose. What I do is I go and I install pollinator gardens um, all with native landscaping. It's really, really important to have native landscaping um, and obviously pesticide free yards. Um, so in this um, installation of, of gardens, I also have um, a nursery. So I grow my own stuff and make sure that no pesticides are used because the pesticides it will not only harm caterpillars but the butterflies and bees and other things that we need to create a healthy ecosystem. So um, through this I'm trying to put a hands-on learning experience with it. So I'm creating something that will give you a do-it-yourself kind of thing um, and it's fairly simple. It's just follow like a one, two, three. Um, you, you prep and you, you build, you let things kind of um, nurture itself for a week or so, and then you plant your plants, and then you come back and you start to see things flourishing. Um, so that's the whole purpose of what we're kind of doing here today is we're gonna prep everything, we're gonna layer everything, and then we're gonna let it cook for a week, and then we're gonna start planting. So my wife and I decided that this space over here, we have this little bench that we set up years ago. We like this space, we like the trees, we would like to see more pollinator type plants here. When Drake came over to offer to build this butterfly garden, we knew that this was one of the places on the farm that was gonna be our choice. That's where we wanted to see something happen. So when Drake, uh, she saw this location, she said, this is great. There's enough sun exposure and there's enough shade as well for some of the plants. Some of the pollinator plants are going to like some of that uh, reduced sun exposure. Right now, Drake is taking the uh, hodag tool and she's shaping the garden. She's coming around the edge and she's finding the, the shape of the garden that she wants. And then removing some of the green that's in the top. So she's not tilling the soil, but she's going to take some of that top layer off where a lot of that green is uh, already growing. We are gonna put cardboard down, but uh, just taking some of that top layer out is gonna help reduce some of the growth that might happen through the cardboard and compost layer. All right, Drake, this looks like something I can do. Do you mind if I take over yeah. while you get some of the other sure. materials? Sure, absolutely. why we're actually using cardboard is because we don't really want to get into using landscape fabric. By using landscape fabric you actually don't allow your soil to breathe um, so it kind of smothers it. The cardboard will actually break down and create more nutrients um, for, for the garden and also keep the barrier down for weeds. I think we're just about there Drake. Yep I agree. Just a couple more little ones and we're ready to start laying down the cardboard. You can nicely start to see the shape that it's taking. Yes. Here. So we do want to moisten this before we put cardboard down, right? Yes. We haven't had a good rain since Hurricane Harvey. So the ground is very dry. Look at that beautiful shape.
that's the next layer and then we're going to mulch and manure on top yes. of that yes and so you can just keep watering as i lay it out and okay. as i get this section filled then you can start um, watering on this side we want that cardboard good and wet right? good and wet i did talk about in the very beginning of this video that if we can find a way to divert the ac drainage what comes off the house in the summertime over to this area then we can have uh, basically a perpetual clean water watering system that we don't have to drag the hose over and use the water that comes from the city pipes and it's pretty hot drake you won't mind if i spray you a little bit not at all we'll be using mulch that has been on the daddy curbs farm for a while it's it's nice and broke down it's not quite composted but it's broke down really well we'll also be using um, maggie's horse manure as a layer in here to help activate that compost and get it cooking really nice so that this bed will have that mulchy composty layer that will turn this this uh, the cardboard into worm food basically bringing up the worms from below they're already down there but they're looking for a nice place to live and a lot of good things to eat so we're giving them that opportunity and that space i got the easy job <laughs> if you've been following the daddy kurtz channel for a while perhaps the first time you saw drake was last year last october when we had our farm day she had a beautiful exhibit of butterflies and other pollinators where she got to share her experience and her passion with people who came out to the farm for farm day the kids loved it from right here i think we you can continue to keep watering and get it nice and wet and i'm gonna go load up some of the mulch manure and then we can start laying down and spreading the next layer um, so this is kind of like lasagna you're going to kind of layer it like lasagna you have a layer of cardboard then a layer of compost mulchy kind of material a second layer of cardboard and then your top layer of mulch with compost and manure and things like that oh and i got a special treat <gasps> i got composted grass clippings in the garden oh perfect i, I was going to put them on the garden bed but uh, i haven't decided which garden bed so we'll just do it right here yay more food for the plants excited I'm going to drive around and grab the rake and then meet you guys over at the garden. Perfect. Thank you so much, Luke. Okay, Drake, I bring gifts of horse manure and rotten yard lawn clippings yay awesome so would you like because i know we're going to sandwich a lot of this stuff in between two layers of cardboard correct so would you like for me to go ahead and start spreading out the horse manure and lawn clippings yes and then i'm going to lay this on top of it um and then we'll lay another layer of the um cardboard okay. and then another lasagna layer just like that of the grass clip oh great so we don't want to use it all in one correct group. okay yes so we'll try to get half of it down and then the other half again yes this manure is not really composted so much as it's just aged and dried out which is still it's still good and i don't think i've ever been more excited and happy to see a some, big pile of poop yes a big pile of poo <laughs> any type of poo from from animals whether it be the chickens or even the horses um it's a it's a mineral source for butterflies so oh, nice. as much as they actually even just um use nectar from flowers and things like that they also collect their minerals um, from things like the soil um, rocks and and poo wow. um, so this is actually an important source also just for the butterflies themselves but it serves another purpose to give um, the nutrients to the to the flower beds and the nutrients to the butterflies because for male butterflies they have to have these uh, minerals because if they don't have them then they are actually sterile and then they can't mate. Oh wow, that's, so, that's important. So the, the horse manure that's laying in the yard is very good for butterflies. for the butterflies. Yes. 
Yep. Well, that's an interesting nugget. Get it? I like it. Nugget. Yep. For the butterflies. It's a nugget. Nugget. This is very aged lawn clippings. It's got some leaves, some grass. We're just gonna... It's already turning to compost in the bag. And I'm right behind you. But then you're gonna have up here in the big area um, plants that will grow at about two and a half to three feet tall. And then it'll come slope on down. So it gives kind of a 3D effect of the actual paisley that you're gonna have that wraps around your sitting bench. The next layer of this garden is again cardboard, but I have some feed sacks. And I think that would be a really nice addition to that layer because I have excess feed sacks. Now this particular feed sack is one that does not have a plastic lining. It's paper all the way through. So this can be used in place of cardboard or along with cardboard. So I'm just gonna lay this feed sack up here on this big section here. Sounds good. And I got one more feed sack. Hi, baby. Look at how you're purple. I've never seen one purple. What's that? Dragonfly. Oh, yeah, we have some red ones and purple ones out here. Yeah, and that's the look I've never seen. And she wants the water. Perfect. You always have to remember when we're working in the garden like this that we want to stay hydrated too. Which is why we drink water. Now mulch, lots and lots of mulch. Putting a nice big thick layer of mulch on top. We're gonna get this good and wet. And all this, this is now probably about seven or eight inches thick worth of cardboard and grass clippings and horse manure and more cardboard and mulch on top. When that gets really wet, that's gonna start activating the life from the ground and the bacteria and such that are in all of those materials. And it'll start breaking down and creating a composted layer that's gonna be what the plants and the soil life needs. At least that's what Drake said. Yes. <laughs> It'll kickstart the microorganisms that are in all this stuff. We do run a risk of the horse walking on it, which is okay, but the bigger risk is the chickens coming in here and scratching it all up. Hopefully after I get the the borders surrounded with mesquite logs I have several logs that are coming down and I'll line the edge of this garden with those logs that will contain even though the chickens will scratch it Hopefully will contain it into this space and not spread it all over the yard What's going on here is that Drake is sharing her passion for the pollinators and building gardens and she wanted to do that on the daddy curbs farm This is a service she offers and I am pleased to share this space with her as she builds her business. And she's already been in the business of pollinators for a long time and been doing gardens for a while. But now she's trying to build the business of creating content and kits for people to be able to do this on their own as a DIY kind of thing. Because my, my thing is, is I want people to understand that I'm trying to create that hands-on learning experience and that means they have to do it to get that. Yeah. But they can watch the YouTube channel to learn step by step and not have to guess what do I do next. Yeah, Drake is going to be building a YouTube channel. She's working on it. She's got the foundation started. She's going to have content for uh, just fun content showing some of the pupation of the different pollinators, the caterpillars turning into butterflies, things like that. But also content that will give people the encouragement and the information they need to build these gardens on their own. Now, Drake has expressed to me several times that she really wants people to get hands-on, get their hands dirty, get into it, and get connected with the garden. 
that means that you actually have to get into it and um, feel it, taste it. Well, you probably don't taste it. Smell it and just be connected with nature so that you can enjoy that space even more because you will be connected to it. I'll try to get the borders um, formed up with the logs before you get here next week. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Just when you're forming the borders, just kind of remember that this kind of goes in a little bit. Yeah. Um, to keep it to over keep the it that paisley. Just think of the paisley shape. Oh right. Shape. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drake, I'm very excited about what we have going on here. I know we just threw around dirt, poop, and mulch, but it was so much fun to have you on the farm to build this uh, pollinator butterfly garden. Forgive me if I kind of took over a little bit because oh, no. you stirred up some passion in me. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and, and talk about what you have going on well, and what we're doing here and your hopes and dreams. Yes, and so um, I am very excited as well, and I'm glad that you allowed me to come out here and, and kind of get a, a grip on what my intentions are, and, and that is, I'm glad that you took over because this is a DIY, so it's a hands-on learning yep. experience, which actually gives you a bonding to the actual project. Yeah, so, connects you with nature. Exactly, um, and so I'm really excited to keep this going and, and looking forward to coming back um, really soon, putting some plants in the ground and looking for some uh, butterflies and little critters to come in and, and make it all come together. Wonderful. And until next time, peace, peace love, love and butterflies. butterflies.